Well, Sunday program was back with yet another anti-family narrative. Previously, it's been pro-abortion, pro-euthanasia, pro-conversion therapy bans, pro-child transgenderism, pro-surrogacy, pro-drug testing, and it's always a one-sided bias narrative being rammed down our throats. This week, it was Don't Have Babies. The environment can't handle them. Let's check it out. So according to Sunday Program, the most recent edition, making babies, it's what many believe we were put on this earth to do, but our earth is hurting. In the face of climate change uncertainty, some young Kiwis are saying no to creating a new generation. And so there was a number of examples during the program. Example number one, a climate activist creating an army of activists to protect the next generation. i concerned about our climate crisis and our biodiversity crisis. Izzy's sustainability consultancy carrying her father's name, the next step in the Fennec legacy. Helping organisations to future-proof what they're doing in terms of, you know, what does the next generation expect from them in the environmental or social spaces. Phoenix, the company, is creating an army of Phoenix that want to create a better Aotearoa New Zealand for um, unborn generations. And she's got a Mrs Phoenix by her side. Tell me how... Yeah, so the next generation. There's only one problem. Well, uh, two actually. One is a biological reality, which I'm sure you can figure out, given the nature of the relationship. But the second is that they don't want to create the next genera- generation. Got the house, one very spoiled pub. And for a time, a baby Fennec was on the cards. We were having fertility tests done, you know, we were planning to have a baby and it just was, you know, perfectly slash tragically aligned with me beginning the process into this climate crisis world. And the further deep down each of those pathways, the more panicked I was and the more I I just felt like this was just something we couldn't do. Yeah, I genuinely am in a rush these. I haven't had one. Have you? Is it more fearing for the future life that your hypothetical child would have, or is it the carbon footprint that it would have? The reality of, you know, what their life might be like in 10, 20, 30 years' time that played a significant part in our decision to probably shift away from ever considering to have a family. Food insecurity, power insecurity and then that that kid would also be confronted with its own role in that have you wow so much fear so much fear about the natural family and so much climate alarm Uh, and then sunday program was off to example number two and uh, talking about the energy that a child will use main reason behind you not wanting to have children the more the more people, the more consumption, the more output. Clothing and food waste, all that sort of stuff that comes along with it. The energy, generally, that they're going to be utilising as one person. But I think people really want an answer about why you're not having them. Whereas it's like now it should kind of be going the other way, maybe. Is there any kind of tangible change that could happen that would make you comfortable with having your own children? I can't see it where we are right now. Yeah, I um, I don't think there really is anything that could change my mind. Yes, yeah, so that's interesting. Nothing can be done to change things, despite constant conferences and changes and the banning of things. It's interesting. Well, then they uh, interviewed the expert, uh, Sophie from Canberra, part of the ACT government, and the Commissioner for Sustainability and the Environment. It's terrifying. <laughs> you know, we're warming the planet, we're getting more extreme heat waves, but the human cost of that is tremendous. People have lost their houses, people have lost their lives. They are people who are loved, people who are valuable. A human cost and a human cause. Even though we might not think, oh, well, my shirt's got a carbon footprint. Every time we're spending money, really, there's a a greenhouse gas emission associated with that. They were manufactured in a factory that had to be powered. 
and then they had to be transported. They might have travelled by air, they might have travelled by boat, they had to be stored in a warehouse, they had to be stored in the shop with the lights running. And more humans means more consumers. What is the single worst thing an individual can do for their carbon footprint? Yeah, so I think that when you look at all the figures, the worst thing that anyone can do for their individual carbon footprint is actually have a child. And uh, so compared to all the other changes that we can make in our lifestyle about how we travel or what we eat, it's really having a child that perpetuates that carbon emission and those, that carbon footprint for decades to come. Yeah, so uh, that messaging certainly fits the climate activist narrative, doesn't it? Worst thing you can do for the environment is have a child. But Nick Minute, Sophie has two children. Now, sorry, because there's a van coming. And perhaps surprisingly, Sophie in Canberra agrees. Morgan is a really beautiful, sensitive girl. She's also extremely sassy. She's quite, quite, um, quite the firecracker. Yeah, and then up our driveway. And then her little brother Ash is a very happy, relaxed boy. We had. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I say good on her. But doesn't that make her a um, hypocrite? You know, a bit like world leaders gathering for a climate change panic conference arriving in private jets. And then Sunday program was off to Professor Bronwyn Hayward, a New Zealand expert based at Canterbury University. But interestingly, she admits that it's not having children that's the key change. In other words, not having children is, is, isn't the key thing. It's a community response. Give baby makers a break. If you could put the responsibility on any entity, who would it be? I would put it on the 45 to 65 year olds. We've got the highest carbon footprint. We are often in positions of power and influence in our work, in our communities, in our families, in our churches. Thinking about where you're investing your money. Is it in low carbon options? Who are you voting for? It's a crucial issue for the future. It's a crucial issue for people they love. Give the young ones a break so they don't have to stress about giving yes, up children. <laughs> definitely. Give the young ones a break. Uh, so once again, Sunday program has pushed a climate alarmism narrative, but it's a, it's a one-sided one that we shouldn't have children. And their own experts either counter that or they don't follow their own advice. Hilarious. Look, this is an important issue about the future of New Zealand that we do need to talk about. You see, to maintain a population of a country, you need to have a birth rate of at least 2.1. The problem is that New Zealand's fertility rate has reached an all-time low with an average of about 1.65 births per woman. That's the latest stats, which is well below the population replacement level of 2.1 required. And as you can see, it's a massive decrease from the baby boom of the 60s when Climate alarmism and uh, the carbon footprint weren't around despite the number of in increasing number of babies. Uh, and it's not just an issue for New Zealand. According to Dutch researchers, the 1950s fertility rate uh, below 2.1 was virtually non-existent. Whereas uh, for a recent period, about 40% of countries are below the replacement level, almost half. And researchers at University of Washington published a report in The Lancet last year that said 183 out of 195 countries are predict predicted to have a fertility rate below the replacement level. So, you know, that means that the number of under fives are going to fall significantly, but the number of over 80s are going to soar. Uh, and demographers predict the family will continue to shrink. So why is the rate dropping? Well, a number of reasons. Uh, maternal education is strongly related to delayed childbearing and low fertility. Uh, and as females have increased their workforce participation, which may be seen as a good thing, more have chosen to have fewer or no children. And delaying childbirth is reducing the window available for having children. So while delayed childbirth presents advantages, it also presents risks, a difficulty in conception or involuntary infertility. Then you've got economic pressures like student debt, insecure employment, and trying to get on the property ladder also playing a role. And falling marriage rates correlate with falling utility, uh, fertility. You're less likely to have children with someone when there's no formal commitment. And now couples are facing additional pressure from environmentalists. They're being told to limit or reject childbearing as the best way to reduce the carbon footprint. And they say that, you know, getting rid of the car, avoiding long-haul flights and going vegetarian 
are all well and good, but these actions save very small amounts of CO2 in comparison with having less children. And people like Sir David Attenborough and ethnologist Jane Goodall promote messages like this. Having children or no children brings other benefits. Smaller families can free people to devote more money and time to the children they have or other aspects of their lives, such as friendships, careers and activities that give them pleasure. Those who choose to be child-free will have very much more freedom, including for some to do other things to help protect the planet or help others. Children and small families can benefit from having more attention from their parents and greater freedom without siblings, those annoying siblings. Uh, by the way, this organisation, Population Matters, is strongly supportive of abortion as a form of population control. Yet the American think tank Acton Institute said that the falling birth rate can do more harm than actually help the environmental crisis. They say a childless lifestyle causes a short-term economic boom as couples spend their money on consumer goods. In other words, not on having and raising their children. They spend money on things they want instead. This increased consumption will largely offset the reduced carbon footprint of not having children the model assumes that childless adults retain the same work and consumption patterns as they would with children, except they don't. Um, in other words, it's not quite as simple as the environmentalists and Sunday program make out. And this is the problem with the Sunday program. They didn't look at the other issues that I've just discussed. It was, in my view, an anti-family approach, which is typical of the Sunday program. That's why I watched it, so you wouldn't have to. I mean, weren't we told to go forth and multiply? Did God forget about the carbon footprint thingy? Is having a brother or a sister or two now to be frowned upon? And when a married couple announced their third child, should we be reporting them to the population control police or environmental groups? I mean, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? Pro-lifer Lila Rose from Live Action, who shared a message via video at our March for Life uh, two years ago, said in response to Harry and Megan saying they would only have two children so they could save the planet, she said, kids are never the problem. We don't solve concerns of war, the economy or climate by rejecting the gift of kids. We solve our problems by taking ownership for whatever our part is in them and by using the creativity, gifts and talents we have to serve others and make the world better. That's right. Each child brings a unique set of gifts and skills and abilities. What economists call human capital that contribute to the productivity, innovation and well-being of the entire nation. We need a younger population. We need strong, vibrant families of all sizes. Firstly, for the workforce, for economic growth. But secondly, an ageing population means increasing health care, increased aged care, other fiscal costs such as government pension. Taxes pay for this. Welfare payments support our elderly. But not if we don't have a younger population to support this responsibility. We need taxpayers, workers. In other words, someone has to look after old people like me and possibly you as we get older and retire. As a parent often says to their children, we looked after you as children and paid all your bills. When we get old and needy, we'll be coming to your place. And thirdly, with a declining fertility rate comes a reliance on migration, people from other countries to provide. But all countries around the world are going to be competing for that migration because most countries are facing the same dilemma. Now, researcher Lindsay Mitchell wrote a report for us called Families, Fewer or No Children, How Worried Should We Be in 2019? I'd encourage you to download it from our website and have a read of it. The future of our country depends on our fertility rate. Go forth and multiply. But I leave the final word to our Sunday program, New Zealand Expert. Will not having children save the planet? No.